Never has one issue been killed so thoroughly as has the rebel theme at UTA. On several occasions, votes were held to determine what the theme of the school should be. Overwhelmingly, each time the rebel theme won. Well, this time, the UTA regents have made sure that's not an eventuality by prohibiting write-in ballots and by taking the rebel theme off the ballot. So whatever wins, it won't be the rebel theme. I asked some of the students at UTA what they thought should be the theme from the school. I started off with former cheerleader Sandy Jo Langford. She said that she originally supported the rebel theme, but now she's kind of glad they're killing it. The students today are choosing between Mavericks, Rangers, Toros, and Hawks. But really, you couldn't tell there's an election going on because nobody really seems to care. I managed to find some supporters, as you saw, of the Mavericks, found some for Toros. But Hawks and Rangers advocates uh, simply weren't in evidence today. Actually, that's the way it's been at UTA. Nobody really cares anymore. Jay Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, University of Texas at Arlington. The continuing political squabble in Balt Springs and southeast Dallas County has finally boiled over. That is, into the resignation of the police chief and his officers. This political squabble, which has pitted Councilman Chumley, Jackson, and Carter against Councilman Pickle, Buchanan, and Mayor Renfro, has been brewing for some time. We talked with a number of the participants today, including the resigned police chief, F.T. Marshall. I ask if the accusations, both personal and administrative, are true. Chief Marshall and the others in private illegal meetings. No, sir, it wasn't illegal. Uh, any citizen could have sat in on it, but it was discussed in personnel, and uh, he didn't say anything about wanting an open meeting or a closed meeting, so as far as I'm concerned, it wasn't an illegal meeting. What happens to the city now? We advertise for chief of police and a lieutenant and take applications for patrolmen. Thank you very much, Mr. Carter. Well, what happens now to the city of Balt Springs? Not today or tomorrow, but in the future. What is the future for this city? That's the question we pose to Mayor L.D. Renfro. Correct the problem of personnel. I think civil service or home rule charter would be the proper thing for the city of Balt Springs. Do you think this would solve the city's problems? It would help in solving the problems. You've had mass resignations out here. What about you as mayor? Are you going to resign? I've fought him for seven years, and I have no intention to resign. Well, the disagreements may continue, but Mayor L.D. Renfro is doing his best to protect the residents in the meantime. He has asked for and received the help of the Dallas County Sheriff's Office and the Texas Department of Public Safety. From Balt Springs, this is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News on the Move. We have established our position. Our position is very clear that it's a great compromise on the part of the Palestinians to accept the non-indigenous Jew who migrated into Palestine with the idea of setting up an exclusively Jewish state, a supremacist type of state, a racialist type of state in our midst and excluding the indigenous Palestinians. We have established as a compromise that even that type of Palestinian, if he is going to disavow himself from that type of mentality, will have the opportunity to live as an equal partner in the development and the growth of our society. And we consider that to be a step in the direction of a permanent and lasting peace. What chance do you think the conflict in the Middle East has of developing into a third world war? I'm sure that depends on those countries that have been making it as an integral part of their policy to continue to arm an aggressor a state that has committed to itself to expansion at the expense of other Arab territory. It depends on the policies of that particular power, whether it wants to see the confrontation in the area remain as a regional confrontation or develop into a global confrontation. By that power, you mean the United States? The country that has been arming Israel up to its teeth, the country that has been insisting that three million Israelis should maintain the balance of power with more than 100 million Arabs. Everything you see on this table in front of me is disposable, from the plastic coffee cups to the uh, paper milk containers and plastic uh, pepper and salt shakers, uh, paper tablecloths, placemats, and everything. This 
luncheon was given by the Southwest Paper Merchants Association to dramatize the disposability of their wares. Well, this is all well and good, except for the fact that environmentalists over the past few years have been complaining about disposable items, saying that the burning of such items pollutes the air, the burying of them is eventually going to run us out of land space, and the litter from them is overrunning our streets and highways. I asked uh, Southwest Paper Merchants Association Executive Secretary Banks Miller what the industry is doing about all this. Well, it's going to be condensed down into a very small bag. This means it will not be blowing anywhere, anywhere, not be in anybody's yard or out in the street, and the small bag can be disposed of either by burning or by burying. Doesn't this contribute to pollution of the atmosphere? Not particularly, because uh, we would hope that at least in this part of the country, uh, with our air as it is now, the smoke would be blown away, and uh, I think really they we're aiming for more for burying at this time. Banks Miller says that yes, the paper industry is concerned about ecology. To dramatize this, at this luncheon, when the members finished eating, they took their plates, napkins, spoons, forks, knives, cups, everything, and compressed them in one of the new trash compactors on the market. Thus, enabling the individual homeowner, or in the case of this luncheon, the Paper Merchants Association, to dispose of them neatly, either by burning or by burying. But the litter, at least, won't get all over the streets and highways. J. Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. The NB Ranch in Roanoke, between Dallas and Fort Worth, owned by Bunker Hunt, a grazing area specially designed for the enrichment of Charlay cattle. On this ranch, Bunker, as he's known throughout the nation, ramrods the biggest Charlay spread in the world. Today, cattle buyers and breeders from as far away as Canada took seats inside this tent and began making their choices as the NB Ranch started trimming its herd by about 1,600 female heads. Just before the sale started, Bunker took a few minutes to talk with Channel 8's Murray Cox about the sale and the world-famous Charlet. Murray, we're selling uh, 250 uh, French char uh, Charolais cattle, and uh, that doesn't include the calves. This but is today. What about tomorrow and next day? Uh, tomorrow we'll be selling 500 uh, heifers, uh, mostly half French uh, Charolais, and then uh, the following two days, uh, Thursday and Friday, of an additional uh, approximately mm. six, 600 cattle. I think uh, uh, we originally programmed 1,700, but there's some left now. Tomorrow's sale will be held in Terrell, and then back here Thursday and Friday for the final two days of the four-day event. Before the final bang of the gavel marks the last sale, it's estimated that more than a million dollars will have changed hands. The tent, the steel pens, the comfortable bleachers, cattle trading has come a long, long way in the last hundred years. Jerry Park, Channel 8 News on the Move in Roanoke. I'm letting them have
Well, I would have been more than willing to leave if they had taken the department out of the politics and left them alone. What do you mean by that? I mean that I would have been willing to sacrifice my job to save the men's jobs if I thought it would have done some good. But now you don't have a job and they don't have a job. What happens? We start looking for jobs. What happens to the city? The city will let Mr. Carter, Chumley, and Jackson worry about that. Thank you, Chief. Well, of course, the opposition was led, as he mentioned, by Councilman Chumley, Jackson, and Carter. We talked to P.W. Carter today and asked if he was happy with the development. I think it was a victory for the people of Bog Springs. It might not seem like it to a few individuals right now, but I, I'm positive that it was a victory for Bog Springs. They might as well, because it's cheerleader this year. It, it just wasn't standing up as it should, and everybody was real disappointed and real down, and it was just better that they do away with the whole thing as to just give us scripts and scrapes of it. Why aardvark? Well, the aardvark has been slighted in song and story throughout the history of man, and we feel it's time for a change. The horned aardvark, of course, is a superior beast, but all aardvarks deserve representation, and we hope to see UTA in its grandest moments, representing the aardvark. Why mavericks? Well, mavericks is more of a Texan theme to me than any of the other choices we have, and even more so than the rebel theme, which was abolished.
least 64 children and their parents who come to the Dan D. Rogers School today to get a look at what it's going to be like when they start school next September. Channel 8 News decided we take a look too. I hope not. Uh, Bob Briner hasn't indicated there will be any uh, serious contention, points of contention on the contract. I don't foresee any difficulties at this point. Uh, we hope to make a deal. Uh, we've agreed on the dollar figure, basically, and uh, uh, depending on these points that we're going to hammer out, we should have a deal and stand, be playing ball in Dallas. Stan, uh, was the dollar figure the deciding factor, assuming that that uh, remains as is? Um, I would have to say that it is, definitely is. Now, Baltimore, as I understand it, was given an opportunity to come back. Did they, and did they match or top uh, the figure that Dallas offered? Well, that, you should really ask my brother that question, because <laughs> yeah, of the uh, yeah, financial right. end of it. Baltimore has come back, and uh, uh, they've made a tremendous, tremendous deal. Uh, we'll be talking to them tomorrow. They wanted us to come in into Baltimore. We don't know if it'll go to Baltimore or not, so. To say what is on our hearts to a great man and a great mayor and our great friend. The resolution reads as follows. <laughs> Whereas the Honorable Eric J. Eric Johnson, as distinguished mayor of the city of Dallas, has been a member of the Dallas Public Transit Board for more than seven years, and Whereas he is now relinquishing the office of mayor after having served three history-making terms. In presenting this, Eric, we do so with our warmest regard, our great love for you as a man, and for your, uh, for your service to our city. <laughs> You're talking about Rami pigeonship, I think. <laughs> uh, that's uh, that's uh, the... This fellow thinks that I'm the principal source of income, although I haven't played with him much for a long, long time. He used to look at me that way. Maybe you'll have time now to play some gin rummy because I can tell you that retirement beats hell out of working. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I am sure that it will radicalize the Arab position with regard to the situation in the Middle East as a whole. I am also more inclined that it will be a step in the direction where other Arab countries may eventually join. Moreover, I am more inclined to believe that this is going to create a new uh, balance in the strategical outlook with regard to the confrontation that we have. Do you ever foresee peace in the Middle East? Oh yes. I am more inclined to believe that peace uh, ultimately will come to the Middle East, a just and lasting peace, a peace which is based on the forces that will bring people together rather than disrupt the relationship that exists between people, a peace that will be based on on rejecting the forces of alienation, of evil, 
peace which is based on the establishment of a secular, democratic, pluralistic state in Palestine for all the people of Palestine, irrespective of their faith, where the Muslim, the Christian, and the Jew can live side by side and discover what unites them together as human beings rather than what separates them. That type of peace, I'm sure, eventually will come.